Now that we've talked about nutrition for the child um, and nutrition during adolescence, we're, this section is going to focus on nutrition um, in older adulthood. So life expectancy for U.S. adults is increasing, and this is just the length of time that, that people are, are living. Um, there are some characteristics of people who are reaching old age. These people tend to be non-smokers. Um, they consume little or moderate alcohol. They're physically active. Um, they're well-nourished, so they consume plenty of fruits and vegetables. They follow other dietary um, guidelines. And they also maintain a healthy body weight. Again, life expectancy is just the, the average number of years that are lived by people in a society. Um, and there are several things that can influence your life expectancy. So lifestyle behaviors are our number one thing that you can control. So, you know, if you choose to smoke, that's probably going to decrease your life expectancy um, more than someone that does not smoke. So lifestyle behaviors, um, you can they're basically modifiable. Um, part of life expectancy is also genetic, so you can't do anything about your genes. So if you had a grandmother or a grandfather or someone else in your family that lived um, a really long time, you have a greater chance of living um, longer as well, but then your lifestyle behaviors can just be this additive sort of effect. Um, there is no specific diet or nutrient supplement that increases longevity or that's been proven to increase longevity, so don't get fooled by supplements that um, promote this. As we age, especially um, as we are getting much older, nutrient needs become much more individual. Um, so it's still somewhat of a blanket approach, but um, they become a little bit more individualized. So energy needs decrease with age. After age 50, energy needs um, decrease about 5% per decade. So this is a pretty significant increase. Um, there are several reasons for these, this energy, um, total energy need decrease. So your basal mod metabolic rate is decreasing um, due to decreased thy thyroxine, which is coming from your thyroid gland. Um, there's a decrease in lean body mass or sarcopenia, so um, you know you're just losing lean body mass as we as we tend to get older. We usually we increase our fat mass a little bit, and as people get older, they tend to be less active. Physical activity will increase energy needs just like it does with any other life stage. So physical activity can be important in this realm in that it helps to maintain lean body mass, which again will help to increase calorie um, calorie needs. It burns off excess energy, so if someone is consuming a lot of food, they can um, they continue to exercise. This will increase their energy needs and burn that off without adding excess weight gain. Um, of course, we know physical activity has plenty of health benefits, and it can also help to boost mood and immunity. For individuals who do not consume enough energy, this can have some negative consequences, and we call this failure to thrive. So just not having enough energy to thrive or do the things that you need to do. And there can be both physical changes and then outward-like symptoms. So physical changes in the digestive tract, so absorption will decrease, um, hormones are going to be altered, the mouth, there could be sores, you know, there could be teeth, um, um, teeth issues, dental issues, um, sensory organs, you know, maybe um, lot, or the sense of taste declines with age or sense of smell, and we often we... We eat with our noses or maybe eyesight decreases, and um, we also eat with our eyes. You know, if something looks good, we tend to want to eat it. Um, and then, as we mentioned before, body composition is changing with um, a decrease in lean body mass. So some symptoms of failure to thrive are decreased um, physical ability to function, so to do lifestyle daily activities like getting out of bed, showering, um, depression or anxiety. Um, malnutrition is a major symptom of of failure to thrive. So if they're not getting enough energy, they're probably not getting enough of those other nutrients that they need as well. So this can impair immune function, um, it can cause delayed wound healing, um, which is definitely significant, um, slowed recovery time, and then increased hospitalizations. Um, also they may have appetite loss and weight loss as a combination of all of these different symptoms. So not a good thing to have. So what about specific recommendations um, as we get older? So let's focus on the energy yielding nutrients first. Again, these are going to be protein, carbohydrate, and fat. So protein needs, their absolute protein needs are unchanged, but a larger percentage of calories may need to come from protein in order to, um, to make sure that they are meeting the needs, their protein needs. Um, so still want to stay within that AMDR for protein, um, but you may be on the upper end of, of that now as an older adult. 
Um, again, focus on lean fiber-rich protein sources because these can help control other health problems. And it's important to note that um, you know really um, chewy meats can be an issue for individuals that have dental problems. So as people get older, one reason they tend to have lower protein intake is because meats get hard to, to chew. So thinking about soft things um, that may be easier to chew or don't require as much chewing. Adequate carbohydrate intake is still important to maintain optimal brain functioning. Fiber is great to help prevent constipation, not just in elderly um, individuals, but also throughout the lifespan as well. So focus on fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Essential fatty acid intake also supports good health. Um, like every other life stage, you want to limit saturated and trans fat to help reduce the risk of heart disease. And as we know, high fat diets can increase the risk for obesity. So really focusing on quality of fat. So still focusing on mono and polyunsaturated fats and um, limiting saturated and trans fat in the diet. All right, as far as vitamin needs go, um, vitamin A absorption is actually one of the few things that increases with age, um, but it's still important to consume adequate beta carotene. Um, so a vitamin A toxicity, while it, it can occur, it's still unlikely. So just because absorption increases doesn't mean you should consume less. Um, vitamin D synthesis declines, so this is going to increase needs. Um, Synthesis is declining, one, because um, as people get older, they tend to spend even less time outside in the sunlight. We know that that was one way we can synthesize vitamin D. And they tend to have a low consumption of dairy products as well. So making sure to choose fortified foods is a good option for getting um, adequate vitamin D to continue to maintain bone health and prevent osteoporosis or the risk of fractures. Vitamin B12 absorption also declines with age, and this could be for several reasons, um, such as decreased stomach acid production or just not consuming enough um, through the diet. Because as we've learned already, vitamin B12 is found only in animal products. So if adults are not consuming meat, or these older adults are not consuming meat or other um, meat sources of protein, then they're probably not, they probably are not getting enough vitamin B12. Um, antioxidants are also important because they can help to reduce the risk for macular degeneration and cataracts. So um, older adults should focus on vitamin E, vitamin C, and carotenoid intake. What about water and minerals? So dehydration is a major risk um, in older adults. Um, so as we get older, our, again, our body composition is, is changing. You know, we are decreasing our lean body mass, but our total body water is also decreasing with age. And along with that, our sense of thirst declines with age. So if we, if you are thirsty even now, if you're thirsty, then you're already a little bit dehydrated. Um, and this sense of thirst is even more declined in older adults. So if they feel thirsty, they may have already lost some of their body weight, and this can be major um, of major concern. Iron status usually um, tends to improve later in life. So we know, you know, through childhood, through adolescence, even in early adulthood, a lot of people have iron deficiency. But iron status tends to improve later in life. But um, deficiency can still occur from low food intake in general, having ulcers, hemorrhoids, um, medications may cause iron loss. And then just iron absorption is decreased. So iron is still very important um, as an older adult. Zinc deficiency can impair the immune system and decrease appetite. And if appetite's already decreased in, um, in older adults and they're already having trouble getting enough energy intake, then having a zinc deficiency can, can worsen this. So definitely important to have adequate zinc intake. Calcium absorption is also declining with age. So along with vitamin D synthesis and calcium absorption, our calcium, just like vitamin D, is helping to um, prevent osteoporosis and the risk of fractures. Um, all right, so nutrition and longevity. Um, we already know that you know there's not a single food that can that can cause us to live forever. But again, those lifestyle factors are things that we can do or things that we can modify in our own life to make a difference in our aging. So moderate consumption of alcohol or no consumption of alcohol. So if you don't currently drink. You don't need to start drinking alcohol for, for the health benefits. And this, remember, this is only moderate consumption. Um, regular nutritious meals are very important for providing all the vitamins, minerals, and energy yielding nutrients that are important. Um, maintaining weight and, um, you know, just controlling weight over the lifespan. Um, getting adequate sleep, not smoking, and then participating in regular physical activity. So all of those we can control or play a role in, and this can help um, make a difference in our aging, helping us to, to live longer, but to live longer healthfully. Another area that's gained some popularity is this focus on energy restriction. 
Um, in rats and other species, energy deprivation or energy restriction can has been shown to lengthen the life of individuals. Um, and if energy is restricted, you know, body weight will usually decrease, and this can um, reduce the risk of high blood pressure, glucose intolerance, and then immune system impairment. Um, and so again, this was in rats and other species, and lifespan was increased a little bit. Um, but the long-term safety of this in adults is unclear. So really the best practice is to focus on weight maintenance um, throughout the lifespan and then focus on, you know, quality, nutritious food intake. So fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, low-fat, fat-free dairy, lean proteins, um, and then focusing on those healthy fats. And all of that, you know, we'll go back up in here um, about those lifestyle factors that can, can definitely make a difference in aging. The immune system also loses function with age. Um, so chronic inflammation is occurring in, in most older adults just because of the loss of immune function plus overstimulation by an illness. Um, so as people get older, you know, high blood pressure is common, obesity is common, heart disease is common, all of that is causing inflammation. So we see here atherosclerosis, so heart disease, Alzheimer's, obesity, rheumatoid arthritis, all of those are providing, are causing inflammation in the body. Um, I, I've highlighted here aluminum, copper, and zinc. Those are some uh, minerals that are being examined um, for their role in maybe helping to prevent or slow the development of Alzheimer's. Um, and with rheumatoid arthritis, there's been some um, studies looking at um, omega-3 fatty acid intake. Um, but all of these with inflammation, we really want to focus on consuming anti-inflammatory foods. So an example of that would be omega-3 fatty acid. Um, and as listed here, poor nutrition in general can, can compromise immune function even more. So again, focusing on that healthy diet, that healthy, healthy lifestyle pattern. So what are the obstacles to adequacy in, in older adults? Um, so predictors of malnutrition you can think of determine, and Table 14, 17 in your book um, gives more information on this. So these are some obstacles. So diseases, um, eating poorly, tooth loss or mouth pain, economic hardship, reduced social contact, so if they're living by themselves, um, they're taking multiple medications, involuntary weight loss or weight gain. Um, so this could be, you know, they, they just lose weight because they're not hungry, they don't recognize that they're not eating, or they're gaining weight because they just, they keep eating and they're choosing very energy-dense food sources. Um, they might need assistance with self-care, and then elderly people that are over the age of 80. These are all some obstacles that need to be um, examined. So what's, what's good is that certain programs can help um, overcome these obstacles. So Assistance programs can help by providing nutritious meals, um, offer op opportunities for social interactions, and then ease financial problems. So the Senior Nutrition Program, uh, Meals on Wheels, and then SNAP um, for elderly um, individuals are, are all great ways to, again, provide food, help ease some of that financial hardship, and then um, possibly provide um, opportunities for social engagement.